you could be having your dinner, you could be taking a walk, you could be maybe watching some series in Netflix, and yet here you are, right? <laughs> Listening to me or pretending you do. And well, I'm Jose Maria indeed, and I'm starting a PhD in neuroscience because I want to understand why you decided to do what you are doing now. Let's, take a little, uh, let's talk a little more about decisions. We neuroscientists say that behavioral decisions are those that imply a choose, uh, choice between several behaviors, that is, to do something. Like, for example, having dinner, to take a walk, to uh, watch a series, whatever, everything, to do something, every, any verb is a behavior. And then there is all this pool of behaviors, and we have to pick up one. How do we pick up one? Generally, we are based on stimuli, external stimuli. For example, the pizza that was here before, or how beautiful Marienplatz is now in the center of Munich, or use the attractive catalog of Netflix, whoever has it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so depending on those external stimuli, we will have several things to do, and we can take several behavioral decisions. Is that the whole thing? No, I mean, obviously no. Anyone that has all those stimuli know that also our internal state, how we feel at any moment, is very important. For example, a moment ago, you were terribly hungry, you had pizza there, so obviously you jump like this over it and finish it all in a moment. <laughs> that was the decision of having dinner. Now, uh, the nice thing of this model is that supposedly if we look at it, if we look how those internal stimuli, uh, sorry, external stimuli and internal state are balanced, we can understand how behavioral decisions are taken. And that will get us closer to understand why we do what we do. Is that so? Oh, it's not so. I mean, it's never so. It's never that easy. The problem here is that, as anyone can check, just looking around, uh, we cannot know what people are thinking. This is like a black box in ourselves. We don't know what uh, is in our mind. We can just see that there are several external stimuli, and then we take some decision. How can we solve that? Uh, well, you know, scientists believe that the way to do this is to look at the brain, because the brain is a very cool organ. Actually, it's the one that takes all the sensory stimuli, all these external things that are happening around us, process them somehow, and then elaborate a motor output, some movement that's the behavior we do. And the very cool thing is that the activity of the brain changes during and there are representations of the computations of the brain that we can actually measure and get good images like this. It will be in, uh, parts of the brain that are activated during decision taking. Uh, both for both, ex oh, sorry, for both externally guided uh, decision and internally guided decision, whatever. The thing is that doing this kind of maps, we can get very nice maps of all the different brain areas that are activated at any time. And then we get this very good model. Sensor inputs activate brain areas involved in decision, in decision making, and then we get the motor output or behavior. Great. <laughs> I mean, absolutely not great. I mean, what is this? What is this? Oh, sorry. This is absolutely nothing. No, it's just areas that are involved, uh, and they activate it somehow. We are seeing a picture of the brain, and then we are supposed to understand something. I mean, this is precisely the reason why I was really, really considering abandoning neuroscience <laughs> <laughs> until I met Emily Massé, I mean, who is my supervisor now. Fortunately, I mean, she has designed this super cool machine that, that can actually record the brain, the activity of the brain, like in real life. I mean, I don't know if you can imagine how cool this is. Like, whatever you do, whatever behavioral activity, whatever behavioral test that you imagine, you are going to have automatically the activity of the brain in any moment. And that means that you can make instantaneous correlation. You can see what is activated at any instant. You can see at the you can see what is activating any other thing. You can get the whole map with all the, the orders uh, and then to really, really get deeper, uh, deeper into that. That's an incredible tool. I mean, this didn't exist just five years ago. And that's now a door open for us to really explore behavioral decisions. So I mean, uh, answering to my initial question, I have no idea what you are doing here or why you care about what I'm saying, but I hope that during, I mean, in the years of my PhD and using this very cool technology, I will be able to discover it. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>